Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 64 of the Medieval Podcast. I'm Danielle Sobolski, also known as the 5-Minute Medievalist. As a historian, as a North American, as a human being, it's hard not to be affected by the unrest that's happening at the moment in the wake of the killing of George Floyd. I've thought long and hard about the fact that I have a platform and a voice, and I've been unsure about how best to use it this week. My intent was to hand the microphone over to a friend and colleague who is much more knowledgeable and eloquent about how racism infects and affects our field, but those plans fell through, so I'm afraid you're stuck with me. This is not ideal, because I think that this is a time for white people to be listening much more than talking. But it's still an opportunity, because if anything is to change, white people need to step up and show solidarity with our friends and our colleagues of color, and to educate other white people who might be listening. So here we go. I'm going to confess something to you. This podcast has been going on for over a year now, and I haven't dealt directly with the issue of racism in our field yet. It's not because I'm not aware of it. I am deeply, deeply aware of it. But... Because my personal life has been in turmoil for the last couple of years, I've reached for the easy stuff. The things I know most about and feel most comfortable talking about. I'm not looking for sympathy, because I don't need it, and more importantly, this is not about me. But I'm telling you this to make a point. Because I care about the people of color in our field and in our world, and the injustice that they face, I didn't want to make a mistake, because I rushed things or I wasn't prepared. I didn't want to address this hugely important issue and mess it up and make things worse. So because I cared, I made the oldest rookie mistake that way too many well-meaning white people make. I stayed quiet and time passed. But here's the thing about silence in the face of oppression. It's deafening. And to the people who are suffering, it doesn't matter at all if my intentions were good. And here's the other thing, our colleagues of color have personal challenges too, but unlike me, they can avoid the poison of the racism in our field and in our society. So I want to apologize to all of you for my silence. They say you should never let perfection be the enemy of the good, and I have, and I'm sorry. You deserve better. Medieval studies has got to be among the whitest fields around, and this has a lot to do with its roots in the Victorian era, when white English people were trying to reawaken ideas of a perfect, rustic, lily-white time. It was founded on ideas of literal white supremacy, and those ideas have proved to be very hard to shake. We know from textual sources and archaeological sources that the medieval world was a diverse one, with people mixing from all areas of the world, even brief contact with the Americas. We also know that Europe was pretty backward by technological standards, so that the people we now call Caucasian were definitely not superior in terms of literacy, science, or technology. We know that Africa was a thriving continent, with civilizations that were envied by Europeans. I mean, when we learn about history in general, it's almost as if the highly admired Egyptians and the amazing ancient civilization that they built is somehow removed from the fact that Egypt is literally in Africa. In the period that we call the Middle Ages in Europe, there aren't as many textual sources that have survived from Africa, but we should in no way assume that this means African nations aren't as interesting to study and learn about or that they were culturally backward. If you haven't listened to the podcast on Caravans of Gold, Fragments in Time from last fall, start there. François-Xavier Fauvel's book, The Golden Rhinoceros, is a good overview of some of the archaeological finds that have been made in Africa and what they can tell us. So we know for a fact that the medieval world was diverse. We know for a fact that civilizations outside of the major European nations were interesting. But a quick survey of any bookstore will show that the focus of medieval studies is still predominantly on England and France. This is true also of this podcast because that's where my own specialty lies and like I said, I was looking for the easy stuff. I'm finally lining up some really great guests who specialize in other areas of the world for future episodes because I truly believe we need to address this imbalance. And overall, I do think that the field is shifting. But at the moment, it is still a very white field. So why does this matter, especially in the current moment? Well, it matters for two reasons. 
The first reason is that the white history of our field makes it very difficult for people of color who are interested in studying it to remain a part of it. Imagine what it's like to be the only person of color in a room full of white people. If you are white and you've never actually pictured this, it's time for you to do it now. Imagine what it's like to have people coming up to you and asking you what your interest is in King Arthur, as if you have to explain liking something. Or worse, to have people assume that you, as the only person of color in the room, are not actually an academic, but part of the wait staff. This is something that still happens to our colleagues and friends, and it's not even out of the ordinary. Imagine how humiliating that is. Imagine it happens to you over and over again. But it's even worse than that. Because all of us have grown up in a society that positions white people as smart and capable in all situations, this thinking gets in the way of hiring people of color, even when we think it doesn't. Even if we think we're colorblind, which isn't a thing, by the way, it's just not. If it comes down to a decision between a white person and a person of color for a job, that steady undertone of racism in all of our minds can steer us, whether we're consciously aware of it or not. Microaggressions and overt racism are pushing brilliant minds out of medieval studies, and this needs to stop. We need to stop it. The other reason we need to be aware of the fact that whiteness is emphasized when people look at the medieval world is that it's becoming increasingly weaponized in the hands of white supremacists. People with racist agendas look to the Crusades or to the Vikings as a way of justifying their own prejudice and their own violence. They pick and choose from history to fuel their hatred, and the consequences are deadly. How often do we hear about Templar phrases or Viking symbols being used by people who have committed mass shootings or bombings? How often do racists talk about crusades? They forget the fact that the hospitalers treated people of all faiths and skin colors at their hospitals, that the Vikings enslaved their own people. They had no interest in racial superiority. They were interested in wealth. The idea that white people are or ever were better than anyone else is not only absurd, but history doesn't actually support it. We need to be aware of how the medieval world is weaponized against people of color so that we can counteract it. So if you're a white person and you hear someone spouting off about Vinland, remind them that the Vikings left North America because they never adapted to it the way the indigenous people did. If you're a white person and someone starts talking about the Crusaders, remind them that Crusaders didn't actually win anything in the end, if there can be any winning in war at all. Western Crusaders were pushed out of the Middle East, and the Templars were destroyed by other white people. In fact, if you are a white person and you hear someone being racist and it has nothing to do with the Middle Ages, say something. I've said this many times but I honestly believe that studying history, really studying it with the good and the bad and the ugly, makes people more sympathetic and compassionate towards the people of the past. And I believe we can use this practice to be compassionate towards the people of today. So if you love history and you really feel for those people, and yet you can't understand someone from a different race or culture today, educate yourself the way you did about the people of the past. We are all learning every day, and sometimes we're going to screw it up, even with the best of intentions, just like I did. And then we've just got to own our mistakes and do our best to do better. So here's where we can start. Find the work of scholars of color and read it and support them. I mean, if you're not following Monica Green on Twitter, well, <laughs> what are you waiting for? These scholars put out amazing work, and they do it while pushing uphill all the way. If you are white, educate yourself on what the struggle is and how you can support your friends. There are a million resources, many of them created by the emotional labor of exhausted people of color who have taken pity on us well-intentioned white people. Honestly, just Google how can white people help and start reading. Also, if you're white, remember that it's not about us right now, or our feelings, or our surprise, or our worry. It's time for us to listen, not to speak over people of color. If they are speaking, we're listening. If we're speaking, we're helping other white people who are foundering find their way to doing better, to help people of color, until we are all safe and we are all equal.
We need to pull together now and to walk the walk. We need to remind the world that black history matters, that black scholarship matters, and most importantly, that black lives matter. Here's Peter from Medievalist.net with some of his own words. Uh, thanks, Danielle. And uh, I think I'll begin just by echoing what um, our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said this week, um, that we're watching in horror and consternation at the events happening in recent days in the, in the U.S. And I'll add to that, also, we're also looking on in a lot of sadness. As a historian, you can kind of sometimes see these patterns developing where the sickness of racism continues to plague us and leads to what we're seeing out there right now. And precious little seems to change because of it. And, you know, the historian in me says, all I can do is observe and be helpless to do anything to stop it. And part of that, I think, is just because as a you know white person living in Canada, I've never been affected by racism. I've never had to deal with it. So it's, uh, sometimes it's a prospect that's hard for me to uh, wrap my head around. But the reality is, you know, there's a lot more that I can do to kind of fight racism and prejudice and put my efforts to what we would call a more just society. When it comes to medieval studies, I, I think, you know, it's, I want to hear more diverse voices and I want to break the myths about the past that are used by racists to justify their beliefs. And so I think you know, we want to hear more voices of people of color. And we want to be able to tell the stories of the medieval world, the entire medieval world. And I'll just close out by saying I hope that the people in America who are taken to the streets uh, right now will be able to bring some real change. And that we Canadians and other peoples around the world can also reflect on what we can do better to end racism and hate. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, everybody. And stay together.